My name's Nick Sills. I'm the CEO of Contra Electric Repulsion Limited, and we're developing electric contra-rotating uh, propulsion systems for medium uh, and small aircraft. There are 375,000 propeller-driven aircraft in the world today. Every single one of them loses 10% or more of their potential propeller thrust to swirl. Swirl is a term describing the tangential velocity component of air accelerated through the propeller to generate thrust. If all the air was accelerated actually through the propeller, the system would regain this lost energy. But is this possible? No, not with a single fixed or variable pitch propeller. Industry forecasters predict a big increase in urban mobility and regional air travel in the coming decades. It is becoming obvious that environmental and economic pressures will force a change from combustion to electric propulsion just as in the automotive and marine sectors. This change can already be seen from Pipistrelle certifying the first electric two-seat training aircraft, Canadian, Canadian Harbour Authority electrifying a civil beaver float plane, and Rolls-Royce developing the world's first and fastest electric race plane. There are many other electric aircraft concept developments taking place around the world. I'm sure a lot of the, you are aware of them. To date, all of these electric developments use single, fixed or variable pitch propellers and lose at least 10% of the potential thrust to swirl. For pure electric aircraft, this is a considerable reduction of range. What has yet to be recognised is that there is an enormous, obvious and proven opportunity to drastically improve propeller performance. What is this enormous and obvious opportunity? Between 1903 and 2019, 69 different aircraft types were built and flown with contra-rotating propellers. Contra-rotating propellers recover swirl energy almost completely, increasing available thrust by 10% or more. Successful early examples were the, the fixed-pitch Mackey Castaldi 72, which in 1933 became the fastest seaplane in the world at 440 miles an hour, a record that has never been beaten. In 1956, the Tupolev 95, a Russian bear, with an 8,000-mile range and 525-mile-an-hour top speed, entered service and, and still is in service. And in 1960, the twin gas turbine carrier borne aircraft, the Ferry Gannett, became operational. You may ask, if the format has so many advantages, why isn't there a single civil aircraft out there with contra-rotating propellers? Well, there are a few, including Precious Metal, which is a P-51 Mustang racing arena. The answer is that although there were very significant advantages in using contratating propellers such as yaw free thrust, higher top speed, better acceleration, higher ceiling, 5 to 10 percent better fuel economy, there were equally significant downsides such as mechanical complexity, excessive maintenance, and high cost in using contratating propellers powered by combustion engines. These downsides arose mainly because the power curves of piston and gas turbine engines have a very narrow band of useful torque, either, th either side of which it is necessary to unload the engine by lowering the drag or torque requirement to prevent stalling. The easiest way of doing this was to reduce the pitch of the propeller blades, in the same way as you reduce the wheel torque transmitted to your car engine by using gears. Changing the pitch of a single propeller requires a highly or fairly complex and heavy and expensive mechanism, and that was bad enough. Changing the pitch of two coaxial or contra-rotating propellers was a very considerable engineering challenge and very, very expensive. 
These factors and the advent of the jet age and cheap fuel effectively ended the development of the format in the 1960s. Amazingly, the power curves of advanced electric traction motors developed recently by the automotive industry are absolutely ideal for driving propellers. These motors generate constant maximum torque from 0 RPM upwards. Multiply torque by RPM and you have a straight line increasing power curve. No need for gears or complex and expensive variable pitch propellers. Weight for weight, these motors are five times more powerful than den uh, and pa more power dense than piston engines. The question is, can an electric powered fixed pitch contra-rotating propeller system match or even exceed the performance of the old style combustion powered variable pitch contra-rotating propeller system? As far as I'm concerned, the answer is undoubtedly yes which is why we were building the uh, CRPS 260 system to install in an aircraft and prove it. You may question whether an electrically powered single VP or single variable pitch propeller system could offer a similar performance to an electrically powered twin fixed pitch contra-rotating propeller system. The answer is definitely no. It cannot recover lost swirl energy. If I was a naysayer, I would be pointing out that the reason we use variable pitch props in modern combustion-driven aircraft is not only to unload the engine, of great relevance at takeoff and climb, of course, but also to increase the efficient airspeed envelope uh, of the aircraft. However, here is a conundrum. Using conventional single propeller technology, variable pitch or otherwise, aircraft speed is limited by the physics to about 0.6 Mach however much power you apply. Using contra-rotating propellers, it is possible to raise the airspeed to 0.7 Mach and also fly higher. This is due both to the recovery of swirl energy and the increased velocity of the air mass leaving the propeller. By comparison, today's jet-driven civil airliners achieve 0.8 Mach or more. So if you want to fly as high and as fast as you can, disregarding the environmental impact, the obvious existing technology is still jet engines. But it's worth noting that open rotor contra-rotating prop fans are once again being resurrected to improve the fuel efficiency and thereby reduce the environmental impact of gas turbines. In the new age of short and medium range regional air travel, a substantial reduction in, envir in environmental impact and significant gains in aircraft performance and efficiency and at the expense of 30 minutes extra flight time in, in say a three hour flight is probably acceptable. It is therefore my belief propellers will replace jet propulsion and even more efficient and even their more efficient co cousins the, the high bypass engines in regional aircraft in future. So assuming electric propulsion displaces combustion propulsion, which propeller format is likely to be the most appropriate? To answer that question, five years ago my company began to investigate the performance of electrically driven fixed pitch contra-rotating propellers. An 18-month NATO persisted research and development project together with Hercules Propellers Limited Establish the design criteria to enable the manufacture of sets of propellers. Another 18-month project was run in parallel to design and build a 200 horsepower electric powertrain to test the propellers. The work was undertaken by a specialist automotive electric powertrain design company, Potenza Limited. The test system consisted of two electric motors bolted in series and rotating in opposite directions. A coaxial shaft with a shaft assembly mounted centrally within the motors drove the two propellers. The motor assembly and associated cooling system was mounted on an electric vehicle containing the battery packs, inverters and accessories. Static and mobile tests were undertaken at Gloucester Airport. This video shows the system thrusting forward 
at 140 kilowatts with both propellers at 2100 RPM. The load cells indicated 4.5 newton meters of thrust, which is 450 kilowatts. The propulsion system can be seen compressing the car suspension under load. Each propeller can be independently operated and also run in reverse. This slide shows one of the major benefits of contra-rotation, that of eradicating yaw. Applying maximum power for, say, initiating takeoff does not affect the directional stability of the aircraft. No rudder input is required. The blue dots represent power input. The orange curves indicate torque induced by swirl. It can be seen that the single propellers each generate torque according to the direction of rotation. But the graphic on the right with both propellers in contra-rotation shows the net torque is effectively zero. This video shows a mobile test. Note we pass through a big puddle 200 metres down the runway. This event can be seen as a blip on the data curves in the following slide. This is the data collected during the test run you have just seen at 140 kilowatts and 2100 RPM. The test was designed to simulate a takeoff run from the standing start to rotation at 60 knots of the 1225 kilogram aircraft, although of course it was a car. VR rotation speed was achieved shortly before hitting the puddle in this case about 200 metres down the runway. As an engineering exercise, the system was removed from the test car and installed in a cassette race plane and exhibited in the Dubai Air Show last year on behalf of the Air Race E programme. This was in association with Condor International Limited. The mass of data collected during the trials programme was used to verify performance and assist the design of a more robust system intended for flight testing, and that's the CRPS 260G system. This quarter scale model of the propulsion system, currently under construction, shows the simple duplicate gear powertrain. The casing acts as the structural load bearing assembly and is mounted to an aircraft firewall. Two Yasa 160 kilowatt motors are mounted in parallel to the back of the unit. Um, this is a quarter scale model of the unit uh, with two propellers to the front. The unit runs at, uh, the motors run at up to 7,000 RPM, giving 2,700 RPM. Uh, maximum propeller speed. The electric powertrain is duplicated throughout and each can be operated independent from the other. A fuse large mounted system will therefore provide an aircraft with a true twin engine capability. The system will deliver a continuous 250 horsepower and a maximum of 400 horsepower for takeoff and climb. For flight testing, a system will use two independent 800 volt. 24 kilowatt hour battery packs and accessories manufactured by Electroflight Limited, who designed and manufactured Rolls Royce's ACEL project electric powertrain. It is planned to install the system in an RV4 Harman rocket airframe. Performance is expected to be significantly higher than the same aircraft fitted with a 300 horsepower Lycoming engine and a variable pitch propeller. We anticipate a 100 metre takeoff run, which is a sole performance, 2,000 metre per minute climb, and a top speed exceeding 200 knots. Total weight of the system, including batteries, will be about 500 kilograms, and the cost of the mechanical propulsion system, including motors, gearbox, cooling, and propellers, will be about 95,000 pounds. Electric powertrain and batteries will cost between 100 and 175,000 pounds 
depending on capacity. However, a 30-minute flight will cost less than five pounds in energy. Based on a 200 uh, on 200 flight hours per year, savings in fuel and maintenance costs alone would exceed at least 10,000 pounds. We would anticipate production CRPS systems to be competitive or cheaper than existing same power combustion systems. Thank you for your time.